All right, everybody, welcome in. Uh, my name is Joe, and we're going to play some chess. Uh, let's see here. So I'm playing my opponent is um, rated a little bit higher than me as well. And again, I am um, at my highest rating ever on Lee Chess. And so I'm going to be playing opponents that are rated higher than I've ever played before. 1671, I think Ty is the highest rated opponent I've ever played. So I'm fully expecting to lose this game. That's fine. I'm just going to try to play good chess, try to make good moves, and see how things go. So I'm starting off with the ready opening. This is not exactly the ready, but it is a um, a way to start, um, a way to open in chess that's very flexible. Now my opponent is just mirroring me. That's a normal tactic. If you don't know the opening, it's totally fine to just mirror what your opponent plays. Um, this allows for setups, you know, like the Queen's Gambit declined, um, the King's Indian. Um, there are lots of ways that you can play this game. Uh, I'm assuming my opponent's going to put their light square bishop to counteract my light square bishop. And now my development, like, is that this is why I like this opening, is I'm already castled. Um, I've already got my king side set up. I've got some queen side left to do, right? We still got to get some queen side. None of us have really controlled much of the center. But the idea is if you look at what. Um, our long range pieces are doing. Our long range pieces are trying to control the center. So this is a, what's called a hyper modern. Modern chess dates back to like uh, 500 years ago, essentially. Modern chess has been around for a while. Hyper modern is like 1920s ish. And the idea being that um, instead of just controlling the center with your pawns, you control the center with your long range pieces. All right, so next step is um, in the opening that I like to play is to get my knights working together. I try to develop knights before bishops. Uh, my dark square bishop is probably going to come out this way, but we'll see. We'll see what our opponent does. We're being very flexible. Um, it is a little non-confrontational, this kind of opening. You notice there's no, there's no real chance of anybody swapping pieces or, or exchanging anything just yet. So we'll just keep trying to play good chess and just see how it goes. Trying to keep an eye on things, looking at... At this stage in the game, we're in the opening. <clears throat> so unless my opponent surprises me with anything, I'm going to kind of stick to my plan. Um, each one of my opponent moves will change the board permanently, and so we need to kind of keep an eye on that and what um, what's happening in the process. We can't just blindly go into a game and just blindly assume that we know what we're doing. So my opponent's freed up his dark square bishop. We'll just keep our development. Uh, my opponent can stick their dark square bishop um, pretty much anywhere. At some point, I would like to get my dark square bishop online. So I'm just trying to make sure that I think I'm going to support myself this way. So the idea being that um, the b3 pawn here is going to help control um, the c4 square so that eventually I can push my I can push c4 but realistically I'm just opening a door for my dark square bishop that's really all I'm trying to do is get my my other bishop if you look at my pawns here um, it's it's not a bad formation it's a very very solid formation um, especially considering the fact that I can push c4 or e4 um, and and help help control the center so using my long range pieces and then eventually my other bishop using my long range pieces you see we're getting lots of control of the center which is a good thing right that's a very principled chess that's what we want to be doing one of the other nice things about playing the ready opening i'm finding is that at my rating level and again i'm at the highest i've ever been in my rating level um, I don't expect to stay here forever, or at least not for the time being. I'm expecting I'm playing at the peak of my skill level, and I'm going to fall back to the middle somewhere. But even in the 1500s, um, 
excuse me, excuse me, even in the 1500s, um, people don't play the ready opening. We're not seeing that a lot. And so by me playing it this way, even though I'm going to be looking at transposing into a queen's gambit declined most of the time, the fact that my opponent played a different move order gave me the, um, gave me a chance to, to kind of move into this early castle. But even if I just start with the ready opening with the idea of transposing into a queen's gambit declined, which is a line that I played a lot of, it throws your opponents off. And so it does give me a little bit of a time advantage if you look at things. I'm still within my opening preparation. I'm still comfortable with placing my pieces on squares right now. Whereas my opponent is spending a lot of time trying to decide what the best move order is, you know, what, what my plan is, trying to think about where I could go. I would love to get my knight up here on e5. Uh, it's not going to happen right now uh, because my opponent has that square covered twice. So even if I defend it once, that's not enough. On the other hand, c4, or yeah, c4 is looking good. Um, my opponent doesn't, if my opponent captures, that does mean that I'm opening up the center. I don't know if I want to do that just yet. Um, actually, it would mean that I could get my other knight up here to c4, which might be able to put to remove one of his bishops. So let's go with that plan. The plan being that we're going to try to trade off one of our knights for one of his bishops. The idea being that in the opening, actually I shouldn't say in the opening, in a closed down board where there's lots of pieces on there, knights are really strong because they can jump over things, right? They can get past certain pieces by literally jumping over them. They're the only piece on the board that can jump over. Whereas bishops become much more stronger as the game goes on. As things get um, deeper and deeper, um, and, and pieces get removed from the board. Sorry, I'm trying to think at the same time. As pieces get removed from the board and the board opens up, the long range control of the, the bishops becomes extremely important. Okay, so my opponent is going to look to capture or control this e-file. I'm going to do the same thing. Whenever you fee in keto, right, whenever you, you, you have this um, structure with your bishops, one of the things you want to look at doing is clearing the space. For instance, let's say my opponent's bishop was still back here uh, on a c8 square, and he were to try to attack my bishop, you know, maybe with backup from his queen or something. It's a very typical. We see that a lot. Um, you know, using developing the queen here, the bishop is developed here somewhere, and then bring the bishop along here. You don't want to trade there and allow the, the opponent's queen to infiltrate all the way in front of your king. So I want him to be able to either capture this way, or I want to move my bishop out of the way. But if my rook is sitting here on f1, I can't move my bishop out of the way because his bishop would then spy on it. So clearing the room behind your fianchetto bishop is a very, um, very good tactic to keep in the back of your hand. Sorry, a little tickle in my throat. Okay, I missed what my opponent did. All right, uh, repositioning his knights. Notice he has now completely lost control of the d4 square. Um, I kind of want the d4 square. The other thing... We could mess up our opponent's uh, structure in front of their king. Notice his queen is no longer defending that knight. So that knight is only defended by... This pawn is giving up our dark square bishop worth it. Maybe.
Let's go for it. So, by my opponent's repositioning of his knight, he's undefended his knight temporarily, which means he can only recapture with this. So let's mess up the pawn structure in front of our opponent's king. Uh, I don't know if this is going to help us. In the long reign, in the long game, as, as things uh, progress, this could be a benefit to us. I don't know if this knight is better suited here. I would like to put pressure on this pawn somehow. All right, so I'm changing plans midstream. That's not a good thing usually. So now um, my opponent can't push because his knight is not here anymore. So this d d4 square is weak, uh, which means this this pawn is going to get traded off one way or the other. Um, You have to be careful pushing pawns though. And that's why I'm trying to really think this through because once you push a pawn, you can never unpush it. Pushing pawns permanently changes the board. So just make sure that you're not um, just pushing pawns willy nilly, right? You're giving it some thought. Uh, I'm playing against a stronger opponent. So I'm trying to think things through a little bit more. Um, I, I want my opponent to take I'm gonna give him the take back. I normally don't do take backs, but I'm gonna give it to my opponent at this point in time. Do we open up the E file or do we open up the C file? That's the question of the day. Let's open the E file, let's go for it. Let's do it, let's do the thing. Now my opponent does have three attackers on that square and I only have two. So I do have, my opponent has sufficient control of the D5 square, but the D4 square, not so much. Problem is what happens if he pushes? I don't have access to this yet. Wish I could get access to that. All right, let's get, Let's get the queen into the game with thoughts of bringing the queen here. It also gives us semi-control of the C file. We can always double up with our, our rook here if we need to. I'm just playing positional chess. I am not going for any kind of crazy attacks, right? I'm not trying to blow my opponent's door off. I'm just playing positional good Putting my, my pieces on positive squares. Yeah, so now this is pinned. My opponent's gonna look. Uh, I'm gonna move my queen. God, I don't wanna put it there. But I don't wanna leave it on. I don't like my queen over here on the B file. It seems too far away from the action. But since my opponent did immediately put a rook on that file, I had to kind of move it off. I would really like for my opponent to take this pawn because I would really like to get a knight where I can challenge one of my opponent's bishops. Notice as the board is opening up, my opponent's two bishops are looking really strong right now, really intimidating, and so that's going to become a thing. Notice I've got pressure on this particular pawn here. 
can't really do anything about it just yet, but. Maybe we go with something like captures, night up. That might be some kind of mating attack. Just putting our pieces on good squares. All right, so now we're in a time issue. We do have to kind of keep an eye on the clock, right? We're down under four minutes. Both of us are. There is the five second increment. It's not a huge increment, but it is a five second increment. I'd rather not lose on time, but whatever. I think I would like to move this knight out of the way now. I think it's time to get this knight out of the way so that maybe I can get my queen involved in the game this way. My queen feels a little, a little misplayed. I can't tell you why. I don't know why, but I just feel, I feel like my queen is not in the right spot. I don't know what the right spot is, but I feel like my queen is not happy. Maybe it is the right spot, and maybe, uh, who knows, you know, I'm not the greatest at chess. Um, but I'm scanning my opponent's board looking for my opponent's game plan, right? We've got some, you know, a lot of tension right now. Um, okay. So my opponent is closing down the position. That's probably a good thing, to be honest with you. I do have this and so i'm looking now to see if there's any good discoveries i have right can i jump my knight somewhere where i'm threatening something and no i really can't um there is this though so my opponent has given up control of the e4 square which allows me to jump my knight in put pressure on this bishop and look at removing one of the attackers well not attackers one of my opponent's stronger pieces. So he has now redefended this pawn. But now there is some issues, right? Now we can double up our rooks here if we need to. We can bring a rook over here if we need to. We can bring our bishop around if we need to. All right, so I'm scanning the board again, just scanning the whole board. I'm really trying to train myself to look at all four corners of the board as I play. Um, I, a lot of times, get real locked into a quadrant and I only stare at just that quadrant and uh, I miss things, and so I have to be really careful not to do that. So I'm really just going above and beyond to try to make sure that I see the whole board. Now, my opponent has a possibility of a discovery here. Notice he has defended this. Mm -hmm. So let's just double up. All right, that's the smart thing to do, just double up. We can get our queen involved this way, maybe. That's a little greedy, it feels like. So my opponent is attacking this particular pawn. And the rook at the same time. Sacrifice, grab. Grab? Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. 
Ooh, my opponent's got a really nasty threat here. Really nasty threat. Good job to my opponent. Fantastic. I missed that completely. Okay, so I am going to lose some material here. I'm going to lose some material here. So the question is, let's go for the infiltration. I'm going to lose material. I'm losing an exchange. Nothing I can do about that. My opponent still has a fork, though. But I'm going to get this in, threaten this. So I'm pre-moving the rook capture because... Um, It'll give me those five seconds back, right? Any, any, any move you make, you get five seconds back. So the less time I spend making the move, the more, more time I get back on my clock. This is going to go into a time scramble with too many pieces on the board. I'm not good at that. I'm not good at time scrambles. And therefore, I am going to uh, make mistakes. It's going to happen. So here's where the game's going to get funky. So now it's my opponent's time. I'm assuming he's just going to push that defends and defends. So the next thing I need to figure out is what my, what's my next move going to be? Um, probably push a pawn. My opponent's up in material. Oops, not that far. I would love to get my bishop here, win some material back. So I'm just going to go ahead and trade. Ah, my opponent's got this. Captures with check, captures, captures with check, picks up. So I have to defend this. Um, so at least this way doesn't come with check. Ah, it's still defended, though. I'm going to offer my opponent a draw. See if they just want to take the draw and move on before we lose on time. He says no.
he has just too many pawns. Just too many pawns for me to, to handle at this point in time. I don't know enough endgame to be able to properly make this work. If I move past, he moves down. He just moves down. And I'm not in time to get there. So it's game over. He wins. Yeah, there's, there's just no time for me to get there. I just don't know end games well enough. I just don't end games well enough. So Um yeah, I don't Let me turn the evaluation on. It was around, let's see. Right here. Uh my opponent grabbed. Yeah, it's just the draw. It's just the draw and I just don't know end games well enough. So these, these are the kind of end games that I, I need to study. It's just, number one, there's way too much material on the board and the time scramble, I just, I'm not fast enough. Um, yeah, I was worried about this. Yeah, okay. There's that's one way to do it. See, I just don't I just don't know enough about end games. Uh, I would never in 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 I would never have considered allowing my opponent to basically take these two pawns with the thought that I I'll have an outside pass pawn. I'm just not I need I need to study this kind of stuff more to under I just don't understand end games. That's what it boils down to. Not that I don't I'm trying to memorize the move order, but I just don't understand why end games so yeah at this point in time went from here wow see it, the evaluation says white all of a sudden is in a winning position and now black is in a winning position and i just don't yeah and then from here on out it just gets worse because i just don't i just don't know what i'm supposed to be doing in these kind of end games plus the time scramble yeah and you see his knight just completely ate my position up and i have no way of I have no way of cutting him off. Like, I would love to cut him off from that square, but I can't because of this. So I'd have to get my knight here. Well, the only way to get my knight here is like... Like that. Like, come on. That's... Yeah, and it just it just goes from bad to worse. There's really nothing I can do at this point. I mean, it's resignable. So, 
Um, but yeah, this is this is the where where the game changes right here at the end game. Um, Surprising though the evaluations is black was way ahead at this point in time. Well, I guess I did give up an exchange, right? I really wanted this. This alignment. Oops. This alignment would have been great, right? But how do I get that guy defended? Well, I'd have to move my king, bring the knight, and then but that just seems a lot of work for too many moves. My opponent would see it coming and, and just sidestep. Yeah, and we're both just in time at this point in time. He's under 30 seconds. This is what makes... Th th this kind of thing right here is, is so frustrating to me. The fact that I m made a move, immediately retreated it. It's frustrating because I, I wish I had just left it there, right? That's a whole tempo wasted. But that's the difference between pieces and pawns, right? Pawns, pawns, you can't do this. You can't, if you do that, you can't go back. So, yeah, and then my opponent went for a, an attack and my bishop did luckily save the day, thank goodness. If I had, if I had not, if I had gone for this, then this becomes... Oh, I guess the knight could retreat around to defend. Okay, I didn't see that. I was thinking I'd have to move the king, and then he'd just pick up. And um, we'd be back to even, but he's ha he has more, you know, he has too many pawns. Oh, but he can't do that. Yeah, see, this... The rook can retreat, so the, the rook has to be gone. I should have I should have given him that. I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. I should have given him that. Oh, but I can't. Because if he takes, then it's checkmate. Mm. I, I mean, obviously I saw this move, obviously, right? This cuts off the, the king completely, but... I just wanted it, at this time, I just wanted it for a check because he can defend. So I was just looking for a way to disrupt my opponent's plan, but, um... Got us into a drawish type of end game, but I just couldn't, I couldn't finish it. I don't know, my opponent obviously has studied what to do because the, the, the play with his knight was spot on, absolutely perfect way he, he rotated this knight around to absolutely destroy my three pawns, right? This is my strength, is I have these three pawns. Uh, my opponent's strength is that he has a lot of pawns, right? I've got an extra whole piece, but this is all I have left to work with in the end game. Um, and so my opponent's knight attacking this structure, he evaluated that and nailed it, and and unfortunately I didn't. I, I I didn't recognize this immediately coming into the end game that I I had to do whatever I could to protect these three. And uh, his knight play, I mean, just absolutely destroyed me. And uh, yeah, took two of the three and then trade it away after he's got this massive advantage, connected past pawns. My singular pawn on the center bar, I mean, even if, even if I manage to somehow stop this, he has triple connected past pawns on the other side. So my opponent just has too many past pawns and there's no way I'm winning this. So, all right, let's go back to the beginning real quick. Um, we'll quit fiddling around on the end game that I don't know very well until I study it, but yeah, the ready opening. Um, this is the official, where's the opening explorer? This is the official ready, is this position, but um, colloquially people call any, uh, anytime you start off with the knight to um, F3 as your first move, people call that um, the ready or the ready system or the ready opening. Um, it's obviously not exactly the ready, but um, 
it's it allows you to transition to so many openings. My opponent just simply played um, a symmetrical variant, totally fine. This just gave me a chance to jump here. As soon as my opponent played this pawn, I knew that I wanted to get Fianchetto as soon as possible to have this opposition. And from the opening, I felt really comfortable, right? I felt like I, I got to exactly where I wanted to be. Um, yeah, surprise, the engine doesn't like that move. I felt like that was, for me, like positionally, that felt really good, right? That felt really good as opening up lines in front of my opponent. But I guess the end, I don't know. I, I was so desperate, wanted my opponent to grab so I could grab back with my knight that I think I allowed my opponent too many moves before that happened. Yeah, I felt I felt good. Like this this got me. Okay, so I was debating on a sacrifice, but I just couldn't find it because takes takes. I've given up one of my strong pieces, and then my opponent can just keep developing. Maybe not that way here. Un undoubles his pawns, and like yeah, engine wise, that's good for black. So I don't. Yeah, I don't see that being a good sacrifice. I can see it takes. I'm sorry, what? Because there's a fork. But then I've just but like I don't I disagree with this because look at this. I have weakened I've given away my strong light square bishop and basically powered up my opponent's light square bishop because look at the influence this guy has. I disagree with this. I disagree. The engine says it's better for white, but man, I don't know. I mean, white has two rooks and a piece but black ha black has the bishop pair in this oh, this position black has the bishop pair for a rook oof i don't know that i would agree that the engine says well this is better for white granted i'm not the smartest guy in the world we know this right like when it comes to chess i am not like chess king but everything that i've ever studied says that the bishop pair in the end game is extremely powerful two pieces for a rook is winning so two pieces when it's the bishop pair i guess it's i guess there's an egg i guess white has two three four five six seven. i guess white has three pawns in the process though but damn i don't know that's that's a tough call okay all right so i felt good at the up to this point um actually right here i felt really comfortable um i had a target but as I attacked the target, my opponent immediately defended it. And I, I now no longer have a target, and my queen is misplaced. So I felt like my, my position at this point was slowly getting a little bit worse, and all the advantages I had built up in the opening, now that we've transitioned to the middle game, I'm not able to hold on to them or convert them or do something. And so... I, yeah, and in fact, the engine agrees with me. We're back to an even game. I disagree with this engine evaluation. But it felt like, like, look at that. Like, getting that square for my knight felt good, right? I was able to, to steal one of my opponent's bishops exactly like I wanted to. I lost one of my bishops earlier, messing up my opponent's pawn structure, but that felt good. So right here is really where, um, at this point in the game, is really where um, I was unable to turn my 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 position. I was unable to convert it, and I think I want to study from here. I think that that's what I'm going to do. Is after I shut this down, uh, I'm going to leave this position up. I'm going to go to work, do my work stuff. It's 8:20 in the morning. 
I'm going to go do my work stuff. I'm going to uh, come back to this in a couple hours with a fresh brain and look at it and try to and turn, turn the engine off, make sure I don't you know, cheat with the engine moves. Try to figure out what I would do in this position to, to improve it. Um, how do I turn the engine stuff off completely? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. But figure out how to convert this because I felt like at this point, I've gotten everything I want out of the opening. My opponent does not have the bishop pair. I have messed up their pawn, their king safety. My king is perfectly safe. I still have my light square bishop, which is my strong piece. My, king, my queen probably needs to get involved in the game this way. And maybe that's really the only the difference is that instead of this rook lift, maybe I just bring the queen over. You know, maybe, there's, maybe that's perfectly acceptable. It does align my queen with my opponent's rook maybe that's not such a good thing but you know if i um if i let's say my opponent develops they did that i think yeah but notice those are both defended now so you know maybe now as i'm starting to move maneuver my knight into my opponent's weaknesses because notice now there's no pawns here so maybe that is a better plan is to get my knight in here and then i do have access to this No, can't do that because, see, if I were to move the knight, my opponent would pretty much have to trade. And then go there. This still kind of feels evenish, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But my opponent has one, two, right? If we look at one, two, three islands, let's see if I can do this. Three pawn islands, um, whereas I only have two pawn islands. So maybe the white's a little bit better, but this would still transition us into an end game and my end game skills are not great. So, but that's okay, look. Look, we played great chess for 20 moves against someone ranked stronger than us. And I'm comfortable with that. Like, that's good. I'm fine with that. I played well. I'm happy. I don't know end games. We know this. Right? We totally know this. See, if I do this now, then... Now we're looking good. Now things are happening. Okay, see, that looks good. Yeah, see, that looks good. Yeah, so maybe a different move order. So, all right, anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave this be. I'm going to quit rambling. Um, right here is the position I'm going to pick up from. So move, what is this? Move 19. So move from move 19 onward, I'm going to reevaluate this game and see if maybe somewhere before move 30, yeah, somewhere before move 30, we can um, get ourselves into a better endgame. All right, guys, this was fun. I I'm glad you guys came along with me. This was a little bit longer video, um, but we played against a really strong opponent, and our, our winning streak does come to an end. That's okay. It ended up 10 games long against some of my strongest opponents I've ever played. I'm totally fine with it. I'm very happy. Um, and we're going to keep playing chess, right? Win, lose, or draw, we're going to keep playing chess. We're going to keep trying to uh, build up, build ourselves up some good positions, uh, play some fundamentally good games, and, and see where things take us. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.